going to install this Inferno cab heater into this X3DS Turbo base model. See how she goes. So first step, read all the instructions. Look at your box of parts. See what we got here. Well, you got a little panel where the buttons are going to attach to. We got side panels. We got ducting. That's going to do all the uh, lines for it. We got our heater, which you can see it's got all our ducts. We got our blower motor, cool lines. What else we got in here? Oh, we got fittings and stuff. These are little louvers, little baby louvers, which you're going to install in a few spots. Two by your feet and two by the uh, window. So right here and down under there. What else do we got? Nah, and then it's like fittings, miscellaneous bits that we're going to need. Wiring harness, switches. It's pretty cool. It says Infernal Heat. I like that. Yeah, so, alrighty. You're going to make sure you want to inspect your parts because as you can see, this is the shutoff valve. It's got off and on. It's currently set in the uh, off position. So there's on. However, you'll notice if you go to on, it's now closed. The ball valve is shut. And then when we switch it to the off position she's wide open so this i gotta unscrew flip over make sure you check your parts or this would be a big cause of frustration with no heat later it can't last doesn't matter it's keyed so if you take it and you flip it uh it doesn't make a difference but either way as you can see off turns that way but i cannot it's already that way this is moving to on shut to off so just note in line with the hose is on and if it looks like it's making a dam against the hose it is it's off Ta-da! so strike one inferno heaters you need a new chinese guy to make your valve before i get too deep i'm gonna build these so i got my pieces i got my hose so i gotta cut little three inch hoses to make these pieces put the elbows the remainder of the hose goes there you put the valve in your hose that feeds the heater. So I'll have to remember that one when uh, setting up the inlet outlet uh, for this. I'm gonna go through it. And done. So oh, getting it prepped. For mine, I had the windshield and the roof, took those off. Windshield's a pain in the ass, but that's only because there was dirt and stuff on here to get the uh, things to slide. Take this access panel off. And then I got to get this whole piece moved up. Hey, glove box. You got to take it out because the thing is going to install in here and you need access to this and run in your tubes. So there's a bunch of screws like these guys here that are holding it in. You got to take this panel right here off to be able to get the whole glove box bottom cover off. There's uh, push rivets in a few spots that look like that. There's uh five of them you got to get them out and then you get your whole there's that kick panel and like i said glove box oh we got to cut this guy like that one inch by two inch so i just use painter's tape and then i'll give that a zip zip cut just gives it a quick little zippy zip zip so your biggest pain in the ass part so far is under here where you'd put your little louvers so it was really hard to show, but what you have to do is you got to take the glove box out. You got to take the console out, which has two screws here. You got your four push pins there. And then also you got two right here. When you take all that out, this whole, this whole piece comes out, but there's this electronic box inside. It has four 10 mils just underneath it. So when you lift this up, you can take out those 10 mils and then this whole tray comes down and then you got to cut uh you can kind of see it right here uh you got to cut the tray to get the tubes through right here right uh the instructions do show where it's cut you can kind of see it right there and yeah it works it's uh a little unnerving when you're doing that 
but it's uh, hard to show but all the pieces go back together. Uh, the other thing I noticed is I kept losing these little uh, pins, so I put the bolts back in because every time I was moving around here, I was knocking those little clips off. So, next step. All right, next step is to cut our center piece, a hole, and then also down on our dash glove box, another hole for the louver install. The louvers just go in like that. They got nice little snaps that uh, goes nice and good. And then these guys open up here and then they spin inside. Then I just put the ducting over that and zap trap. Just like that, better ducting on. Now we do the other side. The glove box, right there. And then we throw that guy back in. Okay, so test fit this back in. We got this side here. We got that side over there, and in the center, we have all our four hoses, which are all going to connect to the uh, heater. Next, we're installing the switch, so it goes there. Well, it can go wherever you want. I'm putting it there. Uh, the wiring harness is plugged in behind it. Um, that's the plug that'll go to the blower. The wire, right there, you fish through, and it goes to an accessory bus. Uh, those two posts, the silver posts that you can see, uh, the closest one to me is the ground, the furthest one is the 12 volt hot. So those get power on accessory, which I tested with the voltmeter, and that's where they're going to bolt up. Uh, it did not come with nuts, they're metric, 10 mil, I don't know the threads and the pitch, but you'll have to get some for that. Okay, so the wiring harness is installed, there you can see the... Two posts, that's what they attach to. The red and black wire running down to the switch. Okay, next up is the coolant lines, which is gonna be up inside here, but because I got the washer bottle and uh, windshield wiper, it's gonna be a little more difficult. But the two hoses, one's here and one's just, you can kinda see it right there. Uh, I gotta splice into those. So I think there's gonna be some disassembly because I need to cut into them right. One's here, and then the other one is uh, right there behind it. I think my easiest way to get to those two hoses is gonna be through this side, but the shock is in the way. So, remove a tire, take the shock off. Shock out, can get into these hoses. Had to use a spring compressor because, well, that shock's got a lot of travel, and even with this at full droop, you need uh, need squish to shock. So I abandoned putting it here because you have to route the cables through the firewall. And because I have this guy, you have to get behind it where the wires go. Unfortunately, this bracket right here is uh, riveted in in some spots, and these bolts here have a nut on the other wall, a bolt, and this is the nut side, spins, can't get to it, and the racket's riveted right here. So I said, screw it, let's go inside. So there's two elbows uh, that I spliced into to run my lines and have them running up back here. I had to do a big bend so that one didn't uh, do a uh, kink. And on the other side, I've got a 90 degree elbow to prevent a kink right here where that one came out. So that guy comes down and around, does a big loop. He's got my shut off, this is my feed. This one here is the return. Now this plug here goes to the other side for the blower. Uh, time to add coolant, cause it made a big mess. And then it's, uh, I think it's buttoning everything up now. So buttoning things up, a few things to know is there's these panels like this guy here. You gotta drill some holes for some buttons there. And then it goes in between where the bolts go. I was able to get this guy in here. There's a bolt here that uh, bolts down. These called to be riveted to these panels, but since these are your access panels, I don't wanna rivet them, even though you can unbolt them here and get the whole panel off. I'm probably gonna start with just screws so I can unscrew this, take the panel out without having to deal with this because um, there'll be a panel that covers all this. Thing to know, this guy that you cut, uh, I didn't have him installed when I put this in. This guy needs to go in first because then this guy 
it's a pain in the ass to get this around it with all the hoses that are up there. There's lots of hoses and wiring looms. So this last one will be for this corner when I get the glove box put back in. Uh, tested the blower, uh, works good, works on high and stuff. And then I decided to install my Garmin there. And since I knew where the two posts were under there, I wired it up to, and it works as well. So on to finishing. All right, so right now I'm just uh, running it. Uh, garage door open so I don't kill myself. And just watching, I topped up the coolant. So we'll let it warm up. And then I'm just checking for leaks, um, which we should be able to see right here. Don't see any leaks. I have to get my flashlight, but basically it's uh, let it run and check for leaks. Uh, oh, as you can see, got power to the Garmin, so that's pretty cool. Oh, and uh, I gotta move that, so here. I don't know if you can hear it, but blowering, blowering. All right, so we're up to 80 degrees. Uh, I can feel heat on the, uh, I'll show you here, 80 degrees. So uh, these here, you can see they're kind of steaming. Um, sorry about that. So these are really hot, especially when you touch the aluminum part. So there's definitely coolant going there. When I feel the line here, this line here, oops, there's my hand. This line here is hot. Uh, and then I can feel warm coming out the blower, so not too bad. And the little fan, she's giving her inside there. So, success! So the coolant bottle I had filled, so let's go like this, there you go. So the coolant bottle is just above the max, it's dropped to about here. So I just gotta keep watching that and make sure that uh, obviously it doesn't go down. Bottle's hot, so there's hot coolant in there. And yeah, not too bad. 83 degrees. We'll let her get up to temp. All right, so here's a frustrating bit. So you get your louver that's attached to your glove box. And you gotta snake that fucker in there. And I got her on. It's the last one to do. But there's not a lot of space here to shove this down there and have all of this fit. So, have patience. So, I finally got her done. Now, what I ended up doing is I popped this guy right off of this. And the this piece comes off of the back of it. So, I popped that, pulled the piece that the zap straps onto. Because this is actually two piece, the louvers. Um, and then I kind of pulled it out, got it clipped in, shoved it in. Got the push pins in and... Uh, uh, tested it and it's not kinked. Well, if it is kinked, it's blown out lots of hot air when it's open. So we're good to go. All right, we're buttoning her up. So dash is back in. We got the bottom panel here. I just used a screw instead of a rivet. Maybe I'll change it later. But either way, you're unbolting this, you're unbolting that. So um, this, you know, it's just on plastic. It's not that tough. It's not like it's supporting the load. The load's really supported right here on that front piece because this is this is really strong. So right in here is where the support is. So now it's putting in these panels. So this guy is going to go in there. These two holes are going to go in between here. The uh, push pins will go in there. They'll locate it. And then there's these little other spots that right there and there where you drill and then you put push pins. So we'll see where those are located. Okay, so got that lined up, but I'll tell you it was a pain in the ass trying to get this and this and the piece behind it lined up. So I used the drill, which will eventually do these. And I ran it through the top one to locate it. Then I was able to get the bottom one in, uh, push this up. And then once I pulled the drill bit, she was located and I got that one in. So now, Zip, zip, and push, push. Well, that's uh, that's all the push pins in. 
So it's a little flexible, but everything in this friggin' these X3s for the price that they are. But uh, yeah, so that's good. So now we got the louver down there. I'm gonna get the heated seats. I think the buttons for the heated seats will go there. Lots of room back here for wiring. And I just gotta do this side's panel now. Okay, so this panel's in as well. You'll notice oh, one of these is different because, well, I lost one, so shit happens. But now everything's all buttoned up. The only thing left to go back on is the windshield and the roof. And uh, we're good to go. And there she is all buttoned up. Got her heater, got her little switches. Got the uh, roof window back on. Everything is all back together. Now I'm just gonna wait for my door kits to come in so we can stay a little bit warmer. So thoughts on the kit? It's pretty good. The price was good. Um, I, I think I prefer the installation inside the tubes inside the cab made it easier than having to run stuff from the outside. Um, it makes a lot of heat. It blows real good on high. Uh, the instructions were pretty good. Um, the nice thing is because these machines are so much plastic and everything's flexible, um, it's actually easy to get everything all buttoned up real good. Everything's all tidy. I like their finishing uh, finishing panels. So yeah, I think it's a good heater. Uh, time will tell if it uh, keeps the cab warm enough in the X3 because the doors aren't going to seal as well um, as uh, like the Commanders or something like that. But uh, I got a feeling it's going to be more than warm enough. Uh, yeah, just getting the wind off of us and everything. So anyway. Those are my thoughts. That's that's how you put it together. If you have any questions, uh, fire away.